evening. You're very welcome to our second Lenten session. And directing our Lenten journey this year, we are using this book, The Trellis for the Soul by Martin Lenny Han. And this book is hopefully guiding us through our Lenten programme. So to begin this evening, I would like to just quote one of the sentences from Martina's book as we build our trellis during these few weeks. A trellis for your soul needs to be built on small choices and practices that point in the direction of your values and not just based on short-term comfort or illusionary relief. What a lovely, lovely sentence. Small choices and practices that point in the direction of our values. So that begs us to ask, what are our values? And not just short-term comfort or illusionary, illusionary relief practices. We very often do that during Lent, short-term. We give up the sweets. We give up the smoking. Uh, we might take on a little uh, something, something uh, that, that relieves uh, our, our conscience just for the eight weeks of Lent. Concepts and ideas have to be turned into intentions and actions, according to the book. Turned into intentions and actions, and hopefully will be lasting. So the short term and small choices that we choose during Lent if they become habitual, they become part of our lives for the better. So on our journey, as we study this book and from the first session, we hopefully will develop these wonderful gifts that are here on the trellis. The, the gift of purpose and creativity, the gift of resilience. And on this side of the trellis, the gift of stillness and balance. If we could achieve these five gifts, life would be very, very different. Let's look at the gifts individually and just, just determine what could that gift mean in my life right now. Starting with the gift of resilience. Resilience is a reserve. It's a physical reserve, a mental reserve, a spiritual reserve and it's a reserve of energy and when we have a reserve of energy on those three fronts physical mental and spiritual that reserve helps us to prepare to recover from and to cope with and to adjust to the challenges that life throws at us but you don't build reserve when the challenge happens. We need to have the, the reserve built before the challenge. We certainly know that COVID-19 has certainly challenged the mental and the spiritual reserves. We are every day listening to reports of how mental, mental health has been challenged uh, and certainly spiritual health has been challenged. We cannot do the things we're used to doing. We cannot go to church. We cannot receive the sacraments. So our spiritual reserve has been greatly challenged as a result of COVID. So hopefully our Lenten journey going forward will help us uh, to build our mental reserve and our spiritual reserve. Another very important point to, uh, look, at, uh, to look at our five gifts on the trellis. The five gifts on the trellis are interdependent. Um, the resilience uh, affects the purpose, the purpose affects the balance, the balance affects the stillness, and they're all affected by creativity. So they're an interdependent group of, of gifts. Let's look at balance. And we need balance in every aspect of life. In every aspect of life, we need balance. And particularly, we need that equilibrium. Just think of the seesaw. We need the equilibrium and the balance between our inner world and our outer world. Our outer world is very much driven by the ego demand. The ego demands of wealth, power, control, possessions, status, 
our needs and our wants. The outer world is a most demanding world, but it's very ego-driven, while the inner world is a world of calm and peace. It is so important to have a balance between those two worlds. Putting things, when we have balance between the inner and the outer world, we are better capable of putting things in perspective. And certainly putting things in, pers putting things in perspective can be very grounding. And grounding is certainly something that builds resilience. When we're grounded and our outer world not allowing our outer world to run wild and out of control. And it certainly was, we could certainly say our outer world was very out of control. And it was running wild. We were frantic in a busy world uh, with uh, all the things that, that occupy that outer world. Our inner world was very imbalanced. And a beautiful quote from Martina's book, you might have found it if you, as you're going through the book, we become drained when we follow the ego. Drained, we get exhausted from trying to follow the ego and all its fears because it is a world that is built on fear. Will I have enough? Will I have enough money? Will I have enough status? Will I have, it's always, the ego world never has enough. So it is very much built on fear. But we become energised, energised when we're aligned to the soul. And the soul is the inner world. Then we look at the gift of purpose. And we might say, what is my purpose in life? Martina poses two very significant questions in her book. What makes my heart sing? What makes my heart sing? That's a lovely, lovely question to sit and reflect with. And sit with this question. Uh, I, I'm going to encourage you to sit with this question during the week. The other question she poses in her book is, what endures when things fall apart? What endures when things fall apart? And I think if you look at those two questions, particularly now during COVID, what makes my heart sing? And what endures when all falls apart? Somewhere in between is purpose. What endures when all falls apart? My family, my friends, my work colleagues. The God-given world around me is all I have right now. All these ego, uh, demands have been crushed by COVID overnight and everything that I'm left with is what endures when all falls apart and very often you find your purpose in that gap. My family, my friends, my work colleagues, my community, therein lies purpose and we can lose purpose when we're so busy in the ego world. Stillness, the gift of stillness. And there is that beautiful saying, be still and know. And I mentioned this on the first night, be still and know. Be still and know what? What do you know? And what do you learn to know when you're still? Again, Martina quotes a beautiful poem from uh, the 12th century poet Rumi and Rumi says you wander from room to room hunting for the diamond necklace that is already around your neck you're chasing for something you already have and I suppose closer to home closer to home in our own Lenten reflections um, Father Michael and Pauline are telling us the very same story with the bottle and the pearl the grey bottle that's full of ash. The outer world just, all we can see is the ash in the outer world. But when the bottle becomes still, we find that hidden treasure, the pearl. In Matthew's Gospel, Matthew tells us, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. 
for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Therefore, really, the treasures of the inner world, the treasure of the inner world is what will make your heart sing. The treasure of the inner world is what helps you to endure when all things fall apart. Now are you seeing the connection between the gifts? Stillness, but you will not find the treasure. You will not find the purpose in your life. You will not build the resilience and you most certainly will not find the treasure unless you develop the gift of stillness. Those treasures are within all of us as a gift. As a child of God, we all have that treasure. Some people may feel, I don't have those treasures. A child of God has those treasures instinctively. Last but not least, creativity. Creativity, life as we know it before COVID, has changed utterly. And building resilience and meeting life's purpose right now needs creativity. Uh, life has changed utterly. And our old habits certainly are not meeting our needs right now. So we do need a little bit of creativity. Again, if you're using Martina's book, I would like to refer you to page 104 particularly. And in page 104, she talks about making a contract with yourself. Making a contract with yourself. And that contract is a creative piece of work. In your stillness and in your time during Lent, it would be nice to sit and journal and write. Writing is a great therapy. And make that contract with yourself. And when she talks about the contract, it's make the contract of small actions. And her beautiful quote is, small actions create the seed of big change. So it is small, repetitive steps. Small actions create the seed for big change. And in that quote, she uh, refers to the mustard seed, the smallest seed that was used in the Bible became the greatest plant when it grew. So the small actions create the greatest change. So this Lent, just let's look at a small change which could create a big, a small seed which could create a big change. Uh, tonight I'm going to just, um, I'm going to use maybe trying to cultivate the attitude of compassion and kindness. Compassion and kindness, they require small actions, but they have enormous, enormous benefit for you as an individual in building your resilience and your purpose. And they certainly have enormous, chain, enormous um, emphasis on people around you. So let's look at compassion and kindness. They're attitudes of the heart. They're certainly not attitudes of the head. What is compassion? We talk about compassion and we're listening to it every night right now in relation to healthcare. What is compassion? The definition of compassion is the recognition of suffering in another human being. Recognition of suffering in another human being. And not just the recognition of it, not only must we see it, but we must be motivated to alleviate it. It's very easy to see suffering in another. We often see it on television and we say, oh God, that's very sad. And then we turn off the television, but there is no motivation to alleviate it. Uh, the definition of compassion from the research says it is two very important components. You need to recognize it, but you also must have it in your heart to alleviate it. To recognize it, you must see it, you must hear it, and you must feel it. So as you are reflecting in these weeks of Lent, try to recall an occasion where you recognized suffering in another human being. Try to recognize how you actually felt it. That's what we call empathy, 
you really need to feel the suffering of another if you want to alleviate it for them. So take time to see it, take time to hear it, and take time to feel it. Um, when, you, when you hear and when you see and when you take time, you genuinely will feel. Often it takes, uh, it takes so little, so little to lighten another person's suffering. So very little. A kind word can do it. A kind look can do it. Even a kind smile can do it. A lot of our healthcare workers right now just, they can't smile at their patients because their patients cannot see them smiling. They are so covered in PPE. Very often they are going so quickly they cannot, they cannot stop and talk to their patients. But the patients, it's the kind touch that is alleviating the suffering of a lot of patients. Just the kind touch when they're carrying out their care. Try to extend a kind act, the random acts of kindness. So when we notice, when we notice somebody is suffering and we hear it, we see it, we might feel it. Is there anything we can do to try and... Is there any random act of kindness, as small and all as it could be, that we could do in our busy, busy worlds? Is there any kind, uh, random act of kindness we could extend? That's being compassionate and that's being kind. Uh, I suppose the challenge I would give you is uh, in the coming weeks of Lent, try to, try to include one random act of kindness a day. No matter how small it is, just try to cultivate one random act of kindness a day. Pick up the phone and ring somebody. Um, write a letter to somebody. Send a card to somebody that you know is suffering. Just the smallest little thing uh, can, can extend kindness. Another very important area when it comes to compassion and kindness, try not to add to somebody's suffering. It is very easy to add to somebody's suffering. Uh, particularly, we can add to somebody's suffering with harsh judgment. And certainly we know from scripture, we are not in a position to judge. We certainly need to take the planks out of our own eyes before we judge another human being. It's not our place to judge. Try not, judging merely adds to other people's suffering. Try to restrain from gossip. And Martina particularly, particularly emphasizes this in her book. Uh, some people thrive on other people's suffering through gossip. Do we really need to do this? knowing in our heart and souls we are adding to another human being suffering. Um, when we do the classes on mindfulness, one of the things that we try to encourage people to do, particularly if they feel they're in the habit of gossip, or they feel that they're often in a circle that's, that's, that's used to gossiping, we use the triple filter of Hippocrates. Now, Hippocrates didn't live today nor yesterday, but Hippocrates said, if you're about to say something to somebody, always put it through the triple filter test. The first filter is, is it truthful? If it's not truthful, it shouldn't go any further. Now, something might be truthful, but the, is that a reason to take it forward? The second filter is, is it useful? So it might be truthful, but not useful. Well, if it's not useful, it doesn't need to be passed on or it doesn't need to be discussed, particularly if it adds to another human being's suffering. Now, it might be truthful and it might be useful. The third important one, is it kind? And certainly, if it doesn't pass all three filters, then it's time to refrain from passing that piece of information on. Uh, a tremendous, a tremendous piece of, uh, of advice. And I suppose one of the, the quotes from Martina's book is, try to create 
a gossip-free zone in your home and in your work. So certainly when somebody in your home or at work in the next few weeks over Lind says to you, wait till I tell you, it might be very, ad very advantageous to say before you say it now, is it truthful what you're going to tell me? Is it useful what you're going to tell me? Is it kind what you're going to tell me? And if it doesn't pass the triple filter test, it might be best to leave it where it is. And you'll see very suddenly, very suddenly, you will break the habits of gossip. So really to be compassionate and be kind. It, it, do you recognise suffering? Are you motivated to alleviate it? And if you feel you recognise suffering and you are motivated to alleviate it, then go back, right back to where we started tonight. And where we started tonight really is that it, you, must, you must make intentions and they must become actions. And hopefully, at the end of Lent, you will be a very different person and you will be a very compassionate person and a kind person as a result of it. You will certainly have developed a really, really good skill. If you could cultivate compassion and kindness during Lent, what will we find? We will find that inner treasure, the pearl in the bottle, because the pearl in the bottle, in there is kindness and compassion. We will have created a balance between our inner and our outer world. Compassion and kindness, you will find, is coming from the core of your heart, not the judgment of your head, because they're core attitudes of your heart. You will have discovered what makes your heart sing, because there is no doubt about it, compassion and kindness makes the heart sing. And you will have discovered what endures when all things fall apart, particularly for the person who is receiving your compassion and your kindness. Through the stillness, through the stillness you will discover that you are truly living the gospel principles and particularly the gospel principle. If you wish to refer to um, St. Luke's gospel, which was on the first, the second Monday of Lent, the St. Luke's gospel said, do not judge others and be compassionate. You are truly living. You, during Lent, you have actually developed the core principles of the gospel. So, then the heart sings a new song of delight, a song of purpose, a song of balance, a song of resilience, a song of creativity, and a song of stillness. Be brave this Lent. Make a contract with yourself to be kind and compassionate.